Welcome again to Falcon Quest Birds of Prey. Today is going to be a little bit different in this video because I'm going to be talking about superworms. Not all birds of prey like our hawks and falcons eat other animals such as rabbits and squirrels and ducks and that type of thing, but some birds of prey actually eat a lot of insects in their diet. So I'm going to talk about superworms which can become a very important part of the diet for some birds. African hornbills is a good example. This Vonderdecken hornbill, a lot of the diet is insects, reptiles, snakes, that type of thing. Another example of a predaceous type bird is the Australian kookaburra. The Australian kookaburra, being the largest of the kingfishers, is more of a dry land type of a fisher and eats primarily reptiles and insects. So here you can see that different predaceous type birds actually have insects as a big part of their diet. Therefore, I'm going to talk about superworms and how you can raise them in captivity in case that you are one that needs to add this to your bird's diet. Or, in other words, it might just be interesting information for you. Here is the typical setup that I use for the superworms. The base is oatmeal, there's banana for food, in a plastic container with a lid, but small holes in the lid for ventilation. Okay, so after you have fed your superworms, fed them up good, you put them in these individual containers. I just bought these online little serving containers. But if you see in there, I know there's a little light reflection, but this superworm actually molted into a larger superworm. But now that it's isolated, it's going to eventually pupate. So when they're sprawled out like this, it's going to be a while before they pupate. But when they start laying on their side like this, so that's laying in a circle on its side, it's in the process of pupating. So you can see how it's curled up on its side. Now this will come out into the next stage of being the pupil, pupate. And then from there, so it's going from the larva, it's going from the larva to the pupate, and then it will transform the next metamorphosis into the beetle. What I do is I keep my individual containers here, and then I just close the box. I have listened to different videos and listened to other people that have done this much more than me. And some claim that lightness and darkness has nothing to do with the speed in which they pupate. And, um, but I do have this box with the lid, and that's easy to shut, keeps them all together. And this is my little setup for my pupates. I would say I probably have approximately 30 that will turn into beetles, and then they will start reproducing and laying eggs. Here you can see two pupae and uh, actual metamorphized beetle 
And this one here is lighter. This, I'm trying to get the shadow for my camera out of here. There we go. So this one's lighter colored. And this one's getting darker. And then this is the color. This, this one's actually alive. It's just when they get on their back, they stop moving. But you can see as that pupae gets darker, it will hatch to this color here. And then the mature beetle will be black. And that's egg laying stage there where they'll start the cycle all over again by reproducing and then laying eggs. The conclusion of the matter is one can actually purchase super worms as needed from a supplier online. And it is actually quite cheap and a lot less work to just buy them if you have access to them. If you live in an area where it's easy to get them ordered in, I would just myself order them as I need them rather than raise them because it's just another few steps that I don't need to do. I'm a busy person just like most of you. But I wanted to share with you the steps of the super worm, uh, which is a wonderful food source to many different animals kept in captivity, including some birds of prey. Please remember to subscribe and always keep an eye out for my next videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.